Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Poets and Kwanzaa's online MBA panel, The Student MBA Experience. Today, we're joined by current students and alumni from three elite programs, Purdue Daniels, Jack Welch, and John Hopkins Carey. I'm your host, Christy Blyzeffer of Poets and Quants. Please feel free to use the Q&A function to submit any questions you have for our panelists, and I'll do my best to get to those at the end of the session. Let's begin by getting to know our panelists. Uh, if each of you would introduce yourself, your current role in industry, your MBA program, and one fun fact about yourself. Uh, Iris, let's start with you. Hi, Christy. Thank you. My name is Iris Ko. I currently work in the genomics industry focused on commercialization of products. I've also previously worked in pharma and currently work at a company called Illumina. It is a biotech company based in San Diego, California, and I lead a team focused on strategy and program management for bringing new sequencing products to the market globally. I am an alumni of the John Hopkins Carey Business School, and current, um, the school is based in Baltimore, Maryland. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeremy, how about you? Uh, my name is Jeremy Lucas. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm currently pursuing my online MBA through Purdue University. Uh, my latest stint was at Amazon, where I was the network subject matter expert for an Excel-based program. Uh, within their re reverse logistics team. Uh, fun fact about me, uh, I have two different, or I have, I have two dogs, Jordan and Nala, a golden retriever and a pit bull mix. Oh, you should have brought them today. <laughs> 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 well, thank you both and welcome. We may have another joining us in a, here in a little bit. But uh, Jeremy, starting with you, tell us a little bit about what led you to an online MBA. Talk us, you know, kind of through the thought process, um, if you considered other degree options, and what were the key factors that led you to Purdue? So I didn't really have any other degree options that I was looking into. I've always known that I wanted to run my own business, and the MBA was more of a natural route. Uh, as far as what I was looking for with the program, uh, the program needed to be rigorous and it needed to give me the skills to succeed within the business realm. But I also wanted to give my employers a taste of the results that I can produce, which is why I chose Purdue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Iris, what about it over at John Hopkins? Yeah, I would say that, you know, I actually had a scientific um, background for my undergrad. I studied biomedical engineering. So I knew that, you know, as I was looking at the fields I wanted to like grow my career in and looking at like the leaders that were in the roles I aspired to be, like many of the business leaders in the biotech, medical device and pharma industry actually had an MBA in addition to their scientific degree. So I did know that I wanted to pursue an MBA, but, you know, considering whether I wanted to do a full-time program versus a part-time program. And, you know, through a lot of networking discussions, realized that, you know, if I really wasn't looking to pivot into a completely different industry, that, you know, a part-time program could meet those needs. And I knew I wanted the flexibility. I live actually bi-coastally um, within the U.S., so I needed a program that gave me that flexibility, but also had a global network and opportunities to learn in person, in addition to asynchronously as well as synchron synchronously. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we were just joined by uh, Mark from uh, Jack Welch. Welcome. Thank you. If you just would take just a quick second to tell us a little bit about yourself um, and your program. And then we're talking about, you know, what led you to the decision to pursue an online MBA and uh, why at Jack Welch? So about myself, I am the, in the food industry. I'm, I've managed various food contract management um, organizations, Fortune 500 companies within the government, retail, corporate dining, and uh, government services space, where I have led strategic profiles up to over 100 million total, total managed volume and, and revenue. To answer your question, what led me to the operations man management MBA was my keen on operation efficiencies. I think, you know, let, let's all look from the last few years um, when we were really impacted by COVID. Uh, we've seen a big decline in operation efficiencies, performance, and even customer service. And so that has really tied everything together. And the program has, has allowed us to think outside the box 
with mm -hmm. real time cases, scenarios and business cases that we are currently dealing with in our in our industry. And we're able to to learn from those along with the the other you know students in the class and leverage their best practices on how to to perform those, those optimization plans. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, why we got you, Mark, do you just want to kind of tell us a little bit about the learning experience at Jack Welch, you know, in terms of flexibility, uh, you know, balancing kind of professional and uh, student and family, um, group work versus individual, that kind of thing? Yeah, definitely. Um, flexibility, there is not. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, flexibility, I, I think, Again, th that was another reason why I chose the Jack Welch Management Institute is because, you know, I was familiar of, of Jack Welch being the CEO of all CEOs. And I, I really procrastinated this journey for years and years. Uh, mm -hmm. Why? Because I, as I did my undergrad studies, I knew how stressful it was to manage all that. And I was really like, do I have the scope or the bandwidth to do this again for the next few years? And I, I was able to, to really do a lot of in-depth research and, and start collaborating, networking with current alumni and students through LinkedIn and really, you know, use them as my research uh, panelists, if you will. And, and what's really helped me face my decision in, in, in joining JWMI. Um, when it comes to work-life balance, you know, we're all going to have something going on. So it's it's able to to set and prioritize your 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 day, your day-to-day -day plan along with your your curric curriculum activities that is needed, you know, to the week-to-week -week basis. Um, it's all about time management, as we would say in in the industry. Uh, you have to properly prioritize those plans, and the way the the, the the coursework is laid out, it allows ample amount of time for you to, to take care of home life, take care of the, 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 the studies and everything you need to be successful. In addition to one, one of the doctors and professors always, always want is to hear from the students, mm -hmm. hear from the student body on how we can make the program more efficient, more better, that aligns with the work-life balance and cycle. Uh, and so I think because of those and, and how the program is laid out, it, it allows for you to still manage your, your, your business day to day. It still allows you to have that quality time with your family. And it still allows you to go through the learnings, not by just checking the box, but it allows you ample amount of time to actually engage in the learnings and really understand what is what the topics and, and the discussions are. Yeah, absolutely. Iris, how about the learning experience at uh, John Hopkins? Yeah, I would say that the learning experience varied a little bit from course to course, but generally included a synchronous, asynchronous portion of the course. And certain courses had, you know, an in-person portion as well, but they were very upfront about that, right? So yeah. the students who are looking for that knew that going into the course. But I'd say the majority of them had a combination of group and individual work. A lot of the individual work being, you know, hey, com completing problem sets or essays based on reading assignments that you had. There were video lectures as well as synchronous lectures where you had, a, you had the opportunity to hear directly from the professor live. You might be working through problems together as well as interacting with other students that were also on the synchronous se section. And then because I, I would say like one thing to call out specifically for Hopkins was that because the student base was pretty um, global, there are actually a lot of students spread out across the US, sometimes internationally as well. So with the group work, you actually got to work with peers across the industry and at you know various parts of their career journey. So you got to learn about um, their experiences and how it applied to specific coursework um, in, in that particular class. Yeah, and uh, Jeremy, how about at Purdue? Uh, with Purdue, it's pretty similar to what it sounds like at Johns Hopkins, but I'm gonna throw a, my, 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 my macro or microeconomics course that I just <laughs> got done taking, sorry. Um, <laughs> we did a simulation, which I thought was really, really, really cool because we got to run our own brewery uh, within our team-based environment. Uh, but this this also allowed us to 
apply the concepts at hand. Within Purdue, the academic team provides for your course load. And there's also a heavy, a heavy focus on your group work com- compared to your individual work. I would say it's probably about a 65-35 mix. It could go up and down depending on the course, but uh, I feel like it gives you a, a really solid base and uh, prepares you for the industry to give you that mix of individual and group work. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for thanks for the insight, each of you, onto that. Iris, you know, often students look to an MBA because they're, you know, kind of pursuing a specific role, industry, career path, um, and maybe, you know, don't think so much about the the leadership or some more of those soft skills that the MBA provides. Can you kind of talk about some of those skills that the the Hopkins MBA is, um, you know, kind of uh, instilling in you? Yeah. So I would say that when, you know, personally for me, when I was pursuing my MBA, I knew I wanted to focus on developing skills that I could use in my current role for, you know, right on the day to day after I've learned it and be able to try it out um, in in the current role that I was in, as well as future roles. So I'd say the particular um, skills that I focused on was one um, financial and business acumen, mm-hmm. as well as, you know, a lot, took a number of courses on influencing skills, negotiation skills. We actually had an in-person residency um, for the negotiation course where, you know, working together to negotiate one-on-one, two-on-one, three-on-one group negotiation as well. And then leadership skills. Um, I had the opportunity to also take courses on entrepreneurship, as well as M&A to understand if those were areas that I was interested in in exploring in the future. So I, so I think that, you know, those particular um, skills helped me build like a network of peers and mentors in various industries where I can, you know, seek advice and also be able to bounce ideas off of. And because, um, you know, building that network in the part-time program through in like an online format, it, it does take, you know, that extra effort if those are the specific in, intangible skills that you're looking to build as part of an mm-hmm. MBA program. So, you know, if that's important to you, making sure that you put in the extra time to be able to build those intangible skills. Yeah, that's great advice. Uh, Jeremy, uh, what about the the intangible skills at Purdue? Uh, I'm about halfway through my program, but as far as tangible skills, uh, marketing management really gave me the skills needed to understand and produce a marketing handbook. And then accounting for managers has given me uh, the skills needed to analyze financial statements, the budgeting, cost analysis, and really financial decision decision making of a firm. As far as intangible skills for Purdue program, I would say that the flexibility, the networking, and the critical thinking skills that it pushes through the group and the individual work. Absolutely. And uh, Mark, what about at Jack Welch? Uh, well, you know, I, I want to agree with with um, both Jeremy and Iris. You know, at Jack Welch, the operation management focused on my professional and my personal, which has been transformative. You know, we talk about t- tangible, you know, it's provided me with the practical skill, skills and operation efficiency, process optim- you know, optimization, strategic, strategic planning. And when we talk about intangible skills, it's really enhancing that leadership capabilities. I mean, we have one course just for that, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, as Iris was talking about some of the other courses when it comes to, you know, M&As and and all that, we have dedicated detoured, detailed courses that outline all these to help us think with thought leadership. That, yeah. that would enable us to have that that continued growth mindset, not a fixed mindset, but continued growth mindset. Um, and it, with all these incorporated, it continues the, the love of learning, as I was mentioned out, you know, connecting with other mentors. That's that's what we do at, at JWMI. When, when you're with JWMI, it's a family network. You know, we're always going to be there to lean on each other when or even if we don't don't need the support just to to bounce something off the wall. Hey, I got this great idea. Um, you know, even with our, our connection, our connection resources, we have entrepreneurship programs and mentors that will help the student body um, for whatever avenue or course that, that, that they're trying to take. Um, so, again, uh, it has been an impact on my personal and, and growth. Um, it, it has 
has allowed me to think more critical and think deeper into a again a thought process um, to enable me to have a seat at the table to where if I did or didn't have a seat at the table with the learnings that I have or the skills I have I have gained with JDMI has leveraged me to speak more with executive presence and allows me to get my ideas and, and my my thought processes uh, discussed to, to the right levels of, of leadership. And you know, on top of that, I have received two promotions since I have, I have enrolled in, in the program. So again, you know, it, it all comes back to circle and, and it's it's been in, invaluable and you know this is probably one of the better decisions that I wish I would have I would have made, you know, several years ago versus, yeah. you know, the whole per- procrastination route. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jeremy, what so far would you say has been the biggest hallmark of your experience? You know, the one that you're going to remember or has had the the greatest impact? Um, so I've got a couple. My first one is from a marketing management where we were able to build a marketing plan for a uh, building permit business that was actually implementing AI as it was coming out last year. But another one was m- our Frontiers in C-suite course. I was able to hear from leadership's point of view from the different fortune firms, but they also gave insight uh, about their decision making and some of the processes that go that are in place at that high within the firm within it within a firm. Uh, we got to hear in Indra Nui. Rich Freeland. Um, it was a really, really insightful experience. Yeah, so valuable to hear those perspectives. Uh, Mark, how about your Hallmark experience? I would say just the the emphasis on real world applications and learning and developing from those best leaders of, of classes, you know, uh, hearing from, from the best experts in, in the field, you know, from, from Warren Buffett to even Jack Welch, you know, his testimonies ha- has been really interactive into the interactive learning, you know, the program fosters and collaborative a learning environment, engaging classmates from diverse backgrounds with enriched and understanding of various business topics. It's just leveraging you know, my experiences and your experience and how we can adapt to to both scenarios, because while we might be in different business industries, we can share the best practices and adapt them into whatever needs to be adapted into our our our, our, our businesses. And then, you know, I would say the impact of, on leadership. Uh, it significantly influenced my leadership development. It's challenged me to think critically, to communicate more effectively, and lead with em- empathy and integrity. Um, you know, leadership courses, the workshops, and the mentoring opportunities taught me the importance of ethical leadership, emotional intelligence, and continuous self improvement. Um, you know, I would say that has been been the milestone as I'm on my last uh, semester uh, before you know I walk across that stage. Okay. Absolutely. Well, good. Um, and Iris, what about at Hopkins? Similar to Mark, one of my highlights is also around a a leadership uh, course. This is um, a leadership development expedition course that is um, offered in Norway, actually, and offered by the Cary Center for Innovative Leadership. So it was actually a nine-day trek through the mountains of Norway in a group of 12. And, you know, again, similar to what I mentioned before, people coming from all different backgrounds and industries and learning to lead one another. So, you know, there were volunteer leaders for each of the days. Um, They had to plan the trek from hut to hut, including breaks, meals, start end times, and understanding how we were going to motivate the other team members through the difficult trek, sometimes up to 10 miles a day. It's, It's not easy, both mentally and physically. So, you know, the what I really appreciated about that particular course was that you also had peer accountability partners and you would debrief day to day after each of the hikes and you would hold each other accountable for your own personal leadership development goals that you laid out before getting to Norway. And, and through the course, I've actually built, you know, a lasting network of other alumni who participated in the leadership development experience, what they offered currently to one in Norway, one in Belize, and, you know, continue to be able to gather on a regular basis, on an annual basis right now, with other just like-minded individuals who are focused on continuing to develop their leadership skills, even after they have graduated from the Hopkins program. So 
continue to build that network and just continue to work on personal leadership development skills. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Mark, what, uh, you know, I guess, what's the, what's the advice you have from someone considering an online MBA at Jack Welch? It's, it's simple. Research Jack Welch, right? <laughs> the CEO of CEOs who has developed a course through his lens and his leadership uh, tenureship, right? But to, to answer that question is to approach the experience with an open mind, dedication, and focus on practical a- application. You know, you have to embrace the learning and journey. Focus on the application. You know, I really want to pause there for a minute because, you know, yes, we all have a, a work-life balance going on. We're all working. Don't just go through the activities and just check the box. Really take the time to focus on the application. Um, build those strong relationships. You know, as I talked about, you know, uh, connecting with your your student and alumni boards. As with Jack Welch, I am I am on the executive board of the student and alumni board as the vice president. Engage with your boards. Um, you know, give them ideas and opportunities how we can improve the student body for the current students and the alumni. Uh, it's all about building those relationships. Stay flexible and adaptive. You know, mm-hmm. we're, we're always going to be be that limbo, you know, that roller coaster, whatever metaphor you want to use, but stay flexible and, and, and nimble and consider the fit. You know, um, J- JDMI was a fit for me. Um, you really have to think about what you're looking for out of a program, what you're looking for out of your future career growth pattern. And does the, the curriculum really support what you want out of a program? And in and, and conclusion, you know, it, it can be transformative, embracing the learning journeys, focusing on, on the activities, building those relationships and staying focused will we'll educate and self, set yourself up for real, real world success to even being uh, Jack Welch 2.0 one day um, and, and really just staying focused and stay the course and really build those connections and those mentorships with the student body and, and your professors. Yeah. Um, Iris, what about advice from you? Advice that I would have is I recommend actually, you know, auditing a class if you aren't sure if the format is for you, right? Again, many of us have talked about how the learning course structure can vary depending on course to course and understanding if asynchronous and synchronous learning online or in person is the best fit for you and your day-to-day structure. I would say also speaking to other students or alumni in the program um, at Hopkins, at least, there are a number of student ambassadors and alumni ambassadors that you can reach out to directly on the website to understand their experience and whether or not, you know, it's a, a good fit for you. And then I would say the last part is just talking to professors of various courses you might be interested in to see if the culture, the learning style, as well as the course structure is a good fit for you. So um, those are probably the key areas that I would consider if networking is important to you, researching the alumni network. There's actually, um, Mark mentioned this as well, right? There are um, alumni boards that can help you get connected with alumni to understand like, hey, are, are they in industries that you're interested in pursuing? Or if the majority of a network isn't maybe in a certain region, that can also help you understand if it's the right fit. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Jeremy. I want to echo what Iris said. Pretty much, I want you want to make sure that the school's a right fit for you. You want to do your research, um, look at the syllabi for all the different courses that they offer. Is it something that you want to do? Um, ensure that you want to make the commitment and that commitment will help you attain your goals. Really look or really lean into LinkedIn and work with uh network with different alumni and different maybe program managers within the school to get your answers to ensure that you're the right, uh, you're going for the right program for you. Yeah. Very good advice from all of you. Thank you very much. Um, We're going to pivot a little bit to some, um, you know, student questions that have been previously submitted. Um, I think that they've got some, you know, good questions that they they are really kind of burning to know. So Iris, we'll start with you. Um, can you describe the level of engagement and interaction 
between online the online students at Hopkins and with the faculty? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say that, you know, in in the various courses, it's gonna it's gonna depend a little, right? There are definitely students who are looking to be more engaged and looking to actively build a network through the course and want to engage with the professor and other students. And then there are going to be other students who are learning, who are there to learn the information, maybe aren't there to build a network. So I think, again, if, if it's important to you to try to build a network, then you ha- it's, it's on you to actively reach out and to engage with others. Um, so it, it honestly, it varies a little bit from course to course. There are some professors who active who are more beyond just teaching looking to engage with students but i would say for the most part everyone is there to have office hours they re- they will answer your questions if you reach out and you want to set up time with them um I, I don't think i've ever had a professor during my time there who wouldn't meet with me when i wanted to meet with them yeah absolutely uh, Jeremy, can you kind of maybe talk about some of the misconceptions you had about pursuing the online MBA and then, you know, how is your experience maybe, you know, kind of challenged those misconceptions? So I, I would say don't underestimate the amount of work that you're going to put into to the online MBA. Just because it's an online MBA doesn't mean that it, it's it's easier. It's still the same rigorous curriculum that you would get within a regular MBA program. And then the the amount of networking you get to to get to pursue in, like you you talk to people with all different backgrounds, uh, very diverse viewpoints, very diverse skill sets, and it helps you uh, make yourself into a better leader. So, absolutely. And uh, Mark, are there any particular resources or support services um, through Jack Welch that you found particularly um, helpful as an online student? Hey, thanks. That's a, that's actually a great question. And at JDOM and I, we have our own LinkedIn or Facebook, if you will. We call it JDOM I Connect. And that's where we're able to all get together and kind of connect with, with one another. And we're able to set up best practice uh, sessions and events where we will share with the uh, the student body and, and alumni uh, to to engage in an enriched continued conversation and dialogue that maybe, you know, there's a student out there or even an alumni that has that curiosity and wants to know more about it or even re-enrich their, their learning um, for whatever the, the session may be. And part of the, the executive board, you know, we lead those, those conversations and those discussions. And, and we have admission teams on, on the call um, to help guide as, as it may steer off a little bit. Um, but we're able to to continue the the thought leadership processes uh, through the the various different networking opportunities. We even hold in person networking opportunities. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we had one here in, in D.C. where where the student body and alumni got together and, and continued to enrich conversations and dialogue to to be those resources. And I think that has has been a a, a great success um, for me especially um, as I was new to to the program and that that enabled me to leverage myself a little bit more and to build those those relationships and build those networking capabilities to to better myself um, and, and on my journey. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, Iris, you know, just as we close, you know, what are you know, what are some of your like final thoughts Um on Hopkins for students out there listening that are considering an online MBA, um, you know, what was kind of the, you know, your closing argument on the experience at Hopkins? Yeah, great question. I would say that, you know, one of the key things I would think about when considering Hopkins is the flexibility of having having both in-person as well as on an online format for the part-time program as well as the the various student base that is there at Hopkins. I honestly have met students during my time there in almost every industry, both having work experience, both locally here in the United States, as well as internationally. So I think that it really helps you build a network that is much more global in nature in comparison to other programs that I was considering that much of that were much more maybe regionally based in terms of their network. Um, I'm based here in uh, 
part of my time in Southern California and then a number of the programs I was considering here have a very California based network. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew that I wanted something that was much more global in nature and Hopkins really gave that to me. I would say that the, um, the other key things I would think about, right, is um, the the network that you get with with the Hopkins name as well. Not only is it for their business program, but they have a number of the other schools that you can also build a network in there within their medical industry, as well as their engineering, as an example. So I think there's just a really strong reputation that comes with the Hopkins name um, that you can also be able to build as you learn through the Cary Business School program. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Jeremy, any closing uh, closing arguments for Purdue? I would say definitely do your research. Make sure that the program is the right fit for you and make sure that you're you're wanting to get that uh, diverse perspective and make uh, to ensure that you're more well-rounded. Network with the alumni. Look to where their graduates have gone. See if it's a right fit for you. Yeah, thank absolutely. you. Great advice. Thank you. And uh, Mark, the for Jack Welch, please. Yeah, you know, just similar to, to Jeremy and Iris, you really got to understand your why and, and why you're you're doing or not why you're doing, but why you're enrolling into a, a master's program for where it is. There's a lot of great programs out there, but you really got to understand your why and where your why is going to take you to really understand what's a great fit for you. And, you know, if you're still still a little on the the, the unsureness, you know, research, you have to do your research. You can't just say, oh, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go here. And, and when you get there, it's not what you thought. And, and now you're, you're pretty much in the hole or you have to rethink your, your decision. So, you know, you just can't go on a whim and say, I'm, I'm gonna go to, to Purdue or, or John Hopkins or JWI. You really gotta understand where you wanna go and what your roadmap is and what you want it to be because it, it's it's limitless to, to what you can do through, through any of these programs. But if you're still stuck on it, and, and since we're talking about JWI right now, you know, my, my last straw was researching Jack Welch and understanding where he was and where he ended and ultimately the CEO of all CEOs, you know, <laughs> um, that's, that's what sold me on, on Jack Welch. And, and even before I, I went down this journey, um, before I even started my, my bachelor's, uh, I said, I wanted to go to, to JDMI and, and uh, I did it. I just procrastinated a little bit and, and I will, I will end it at that. Do not procrastinate. Um, because you you don't know how the coursework is going to be or how it's going to work out. Uh, you know, if I knew now what, what I didn't know before, I, I would have done this centuries ago. Yeah. And so um, do your research, make sure it's a fit for you and for your why. And don't look back and just keep going and, and don't underestimate yourself and don't put yourself in an imposter syndrome scenario. Um, right. You know your capabilities, you know your drive, you know your passion. You just need to understand what tools you want to go after to enable yourself as an effective leader. Yeah, well, it is certainly um, better late than never, and I'm I'm sure they're they're glad that you made the decision now. So, well, thanks all three of you for your great insights and of course your time, and of course thanks to all our viewers out there. Remember to catch the remaining panel sessions on our YouTube page and um, continuing throughout today and tomorrow. And then be sure to check out poetsandquants.com for other articles on the online MBA videos and more um, to help you no matter where you are in the MBA journey. See you next time.